Teenager who fatally stabbed a 16-year-old at a Western Sydney house party has faced sentencing. The 17-year-old was sentenced at the New South Wales Supreme Court this week to four and a half years in jail. The court heard the perpetrator had told friends, quote, I told you I was gonna stab him. The three other boys involved in the incident were found not guilty of murder following a trial earlier this year. Well, joining me live now is criminal justice and criminology expert, Dr. Terry Goldsworthy. Thank you so much for joining us. So what's your opinion, first of all, Terry, on the language used by the perpetrator about the intention of stabbing him? Well, clearly, I think the perpetrator has indicated that he had an intention to inflict harm on the victim. And it's matters like this, I think, where the community lose faith in the legitimacy of the criminal justice system. If you have a look at New South Wales, uh, manslaughter has a 25-year maximum imprisonment sentence. In this case, where someone intentionally stabs someone else, we're seeing them get four years. And I think that's problematic. The community would look and go, well, you go out with a knife armed, you then deliberately stab someone, but you get four and a half years where the maximum is 25. And... You know, it's perhaps it's time we considered something like what we did in Queensland with uh, the coward punches, where now uh, it is irrelevant if you intended to cause death or in, uh, harm. You can't rely on accident, you can't rely on provocation, and there's minimum mandatory sentencing. You have to do 80% of your imprisonment sentence. So perhaps if we do that for one, one uh, coward punch, then we should be doing the same thing for people who go out armed with knives. What about the Queensland government, uh, Dr Terry Goldsworthy, has they've released uh, crime data which shows that uh, crime may be decreasing in Queensland. However, there are some issues about the data. What can you tell us? Well, there's a couple of things here, Joni. One is, uh, you know, for the last three years, the official Queensland crime report has been delayed in coming out or very slow in coming out by about eight or nine months because it's been bad news. Uh, now suddenly we have good news and we can see the data being released within three weeks of the end of the financial year. So, you know, that does make me slightly cynical. In terms of crime, we've seen overall a claim of 0.01% reduction in the crime rate, so it basically hasn't changed at all. And what we are seeing is that they're releasing two sets of data. One set is excluding domestic and family violence related crime as though that is not part of the crime we need to worry about and count. And look, we've seen governments do this before. The LNP, uh, when they were in power, discounted other crime as not being worthy of being counted. And they said that we're only worrying about crime at mum and dad's report. This would seem to be similar, a kind of take that you remove crime that's going to make your figures look worse and discount it. I think the victims of DV and family violence would be most uh, upset that the government thinks those crime stats shouldn't be counted in the overall crime problems in Queensland. The Queensland government is allowing pill testing to be available for schoolies. There's divided opinions on this. What are your concerns? Yeah, look, uh, I'm not a supporter of pill testing. I think it sends a message out to our young people that you can take drugs in a manner that's safe. Now, the pill testing services will never admit to that, but this week we've seen a media release come out from the Miles government announcing they're going to do pill testing in schoolies this year. And the first paragraph says that we're bringing out pill testing so that young school leaders can celebrate safely. That will give the impression to young people that you can, in fact, take these drugs after they're tested with no risk. And that is not the way it works. The drug pill testing groups will get you to sign an indemnity uh, saying uh, that it is not safe to take the drugs. The best thing to do is not take drugs at all, which is the core message we have anyway. So, um, you know, it's a mis it's a, a fallacy to suggest that this pill testing makes drug taking safe. It doesn't, it never has. And uh, if you put that to the pill testing uh, people who support it and proponents, they will always say, well, we're just trying to educate the young people. Uh, it doesn't make it safe. And staying on drugs, so there's a, an exclusive here on the front page of the Courier Mail and it talks about children as young as six are caught vaping in Queensland schools. Six years old, Terry, what do we need to be doing here? Well, look, it's concerning. I mean, uh, vaping seems to be an issue that the government can't get a hold of at, the, at this point in time. I mean, uh, we've seen crackdowns on illicit tobacco shops uh, trading illegally. They seem to be doing it quite openly. Uh, obviously, uh, these children are able to access vapes uh, quite openly. So I think we need to see much more enforcement um, from health uh, department inspectors who have carriage of this and if need be, be assisted by the police uh, to stop 
children this young being able to access these items because they have uh, terrible effects on their health and in terms of being uh, addicted to tobacco-like products later in life. So uh, we need to stop this cycle as soon as we possibly can. Dr Terry Goldsworthy, always appreciate your time and expertise. Thank you so much for joining us.